the Villa Rosa Kempinski, I tell you. Every time Miguna Miguna shows up, he is more than just a man with the same name twice. This man is waxing lyrical, he's sparing nobody. Better yet, he has zero chills. Why? He wants to be governor of the most powerful county in the country, Nairobi County. He's determined to do it. He's declared his interests, says he can beat everyone else on the lineup, hands down. Can he? Will he? Time will tell. He says if the election was held today, he'd be your governor. Uh, and I think he, the, 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 the margin is going to be wider because you see, uh, look at all these scandals. Look at the fight. They are going to fight even more. Mm. They fight with their fists. I fight them with logic and my brain. Yeah, but people can only they take can't. enough logic. People no, can no, only no. take enough logic. No, listen. Nairobians don't like too much English. Do you know Nairobi has a deficiency of, of reasonable people, of leaders? Kenyans are looking for leaders, mm. for visionaries. We don't have them. Okay. They will give you examples of other countries, but there is none here. If And I'm, I'm filling that void. Miguna, if your election... Yeah. It's a close call. Let's say for argument's sake. Yes. If it's a close call yes. and it goes to the Supreme Court, much like the other one did between Kidero mm. and Waititu, mm. we have a very deficient Supreme well, Court. Well, first of all, it will not be close. But assuming it is, this Supreme Court is going to be restructured. And I think that none of the Supreme Court judges at the moment qualify to sit at the court. None of them. Today? Today. They need to go home? They all need to go home. They are all compromised root completely rotten through and through what if they're still there Miguna? what if the four no, no, are still no. there? they would have to go and they will go my friend the determination of people of goodwill in this country to clean up the system is there we got a new constitution mm -hmm. even though people thought that kenyans were so cynical they can all be bought uh, you know yeah. we won at the end of the day regardless of the little problems that are within the constitution nothing is perfect but as long as you keep moving ahead that is all you want nothing is perfect so does yes. that mean willie mutunga's team yes was very far from perfect oh it was it was very bad actually uh, perfect is not even a word mm. i mean they didn't do much the jurisprudence that uh, willie mutunga left uh, behind is nothing zero there is no jurisprudence the quality of the judgment is zero and that is not just at that court. At the high court, the judges there would not pass my first year uh, law school class. Would not? Most of these judges would fail. The ones, even the ones that are praised, if you read their judgments, mm. they are hollow. Look at Lenaola, whom they are praising. Yes. He reached a deal in a criminal case involving Kidero and Shebes. You don't mediate criminal cases. It's, it's, it's law 101. Everybody knows because a criminal case is not a dispute between two individuals. It is a dispute between the state and the alleged criminal. The person who has been assaulted is just a witness for the state. But what about... So no, just wait. Uh -huh. So in the case of Shebez, the judge should never have sent Kidero and Shebez to go and negotiate outside because you are going to negotiate with a victim. The person who has perpetrated a crime has more power, has more money, has a bigger position and influence than the victim. But they got to an agreement. Them, no, Nikuna. but I'm saying they shouldn't have. This was supposed to be, if there was going to be agreement, it should have been the DT, DPP office, the police, and Kidero. Not these two. Not these two. Shebez is just a witness in a criminal case. Once, uh, so let's take it this way. Let's assume that you're accused today of, of beating up your wife and the police come and arrest you. Mm -hmm. Would it be reasonable for a judge to tell you, go, and you've been charged criminally, go out there and sort out this thing? Why not? For the no, sake no, of, no. For the sake of it peace? Ne it never happens. For the it, sake of the no, children? No, no, listen to me. You're thinking of a, a family case. I'm not thinking of family law. In family law, if it is divorce, because that's a civil case, mm -hmm. That's a dispute between you and your wife. Mm. You can do that for the sake of the... When it gets to criminal, it's beyond the two of you. Mm. Now you can't negotiate it. So this supposed to be good judge does not even know the basic rules. Mm. You don't 
negotiate or mediate criminal law. That is why this lunch Raila had with Moses Kuria means squat and the DPP should never take it into consideration. These people should be tried up to the end and if they are guilty, they should go to jail. If they are innocent, they should they should go home. Because that's how criminal law works. Do you think it was a farce? Speaking of that lunch, was it just a show Which for one? the cameras? This lunch you spoke about. No, no, no. Was I'm not going to talk about whether the lunch was a farce. I'm going to say if the lunch was staged for purposes of negotiating a deal, mm. it should count for nothing. It's like when the president and the deputy president were being tried at the Hague. Did they have some side deal and mediate the case? Mm. The case went up to the judges. The judges looked at the evidence. They found that the evidence were not enough to sustain the charges. The guys were let go. They don't say, go meet with the alleged victims mm. and then concoct some agreement and come before the court. Mm. That would be a travesty of justice. But that's what a happens victim, here. Mikuna. Because this system is not being run and managed the way systems should run. Criminal law is not subject to negotiation. You charge the person, you try them. Look at the Tunoi situation. There is an allegation that Kidero gave 300 million to the Supreme Court judges. Mm. That's criminal law. Mm. They should be charged. They should have been charged like yesterday. This tribunal means absolutely nothing. Yeah. The tribunal could still have gone on, but these people are being charged in a court of law and being tried for bribery, which is corruption, you know, yeah. which is against the penal code. You know that'll never happen, Miguna. That's no. never gonna happen. You see, never is not in my vocabulary uh, because I don't think I'm a prophet. I'm not God, I'm not Jesus. I cannot predict exactly what is going to happen tomorrow. So I will say I don't know what Tobiko may or may not do. I urge him very strongly if he wants to leave a name for himself to do his job. Let him get out of the cartels. He's being managed too much by the cartels. Mm. Yes. There's other offices that just make no sense, you were telling me, Miguna, in this constitution. Yes. Other state law offices that make no sense. They make no sense. For example, the Solicitor General. Yes. That office is not even in the Constitution. What do you mean? It is we not... have a Solicitor General? No, no, no. You do have, but the office. I was part of the, the team that drafted this Constitution. You see, some of these people who have been appointed to these positions, first of all, some of them were not involved in the drafting. They have not read the Constitution. And if they have read it, they do not understand it. There is no office called the Solicitor General's office in the constitution as a constitutional body then which office takes care of those duties you see there is the attorney general then there is state law office as an office whatever the solicitor general does can be done by the office by officers within the office but the word solicitor general came from it's a carryover from the old constitution an illegal illegitimate carryover but it does not exist in the current arrangement. Mm. It doesn't. You see, in a presidential system, the Solicitor General is responsible co for correctional services. If you go to the US or Canada, the Solicitor General does not run the Attorney General's office. They run jails. Prisons. That's what they run. That's what a Solicitor General runs. Not state law office. So we are supposed to be a presidential system and we have offices that are not supposed to be. So that's why we can't manage. Yeah. These people do not understand the system. Another thing, even the so-called opposition, I don't call them opposition. There is no word opposition in a presidential system. That is a parliamentary system, a parliamentary word. These guys are just the minority. Mm. In a presidential system after the election, the winning party forms the government. It runs the executive. It is the majority. The minority is just that, mm. a minority, part of the government. The government is made up of a majority and a minority. Mm -hmm. So even in Kenya, code is actually part of the government because when they go to the National Assembly mm -hmm. or the Senate, mm -hmm. they are a government. Yeah. They're debating the, head, together. the head of public accounts committee it's a member of court. Mm. That's a government uh, uh, office. 
So I, I don't know why we are still stuck in the mongrel that we had before the new constitution. Yeah. Uh, it, it is. Uh, you know, and that is why you're having a lot of crisis. The leaders do not understand the constitution. They appointed people into positions or uh, constitutional offices, people that have not read, and if they have read, they do not understand, and if they understand, they have not embraced mm. the constitutional arrangement. So we have a country that is not being managed by the rule of law, and it's not being managed by the constitution. And that's why, Maguna, that's why yeah. there is talk of yes. changing the constitution once again to bring back the prime ministership, to bring back a coalition type that, government. That, that is a cynical talk, and that is being only pro, uh, is only being fermented by people not interested in constitutionalism. A system where the, the only thing that matters at the end of the day is the constitution and whether you uphold it, you implement it, or you don't. Uh, for instance, I'll tell you a few things that happen in this country that shouldn't happen. This country is multi-denominational. This country is multi-religious, meaning that here we have Christians, we have Muslims, we have Hindus, we have all manner of religions, including atheists. Mm -hmm. All these people are Kenyans. There is no dominant religion, there's no official religion in Kenya. But yet, when they go to public or or functions, they probably have prayers by two religions. Yeah. They raise two religions above all else. That is not a constitutional country. If you go to the US, you go to Canada, you go to any country that is not just a constitutional democracy, but a country which is governed by the rule of law. There's no prayer in public occasions. There's no prayer in court. There is no prayer in parliament. There is no prayer during national holidays because it is a secular society. Religion is important. But we must accept a principle that everybody is, in, is entitled to their own religion. And you cannot impose your religion on the other. Mm. That's how the system is supposed to run. But maybe we're just a very prayerful country. Okay, if you are a prayerful country, then pray using all the religions. Would you manage? Mm. Because then maybe even the Okiek will have to pray during national holidays. Okay, let's come back to the yeah. governorship of Nairobi. Yes. I had asked you earlier on what you would do for the youth. Yes. If the election were held today, Miguna Miguna becomes the next governor, what's the first thing you would do? All right, that's a good, good question. The first thing I would do, Jeff, is do a forensic audit of everything. The books, the finances, the, emplo the, the, the employees, public servants mm -hmm. working. All the ghost carries, workers, everything. The infrastructure the contracts, the payments, everything will be forensically audited. And it will not be done by a Kenyan uh, audit company. Mm. It will not be done by, uh, by the audit office. I have it. I will not tell you who will audit it, but I will do it thoroughly. I will do it in a way that the FBI would do it. Mm. I will do it to the bone. And then we will get to know where we are financially, where we are in terms of who are the ghost workers and who are the genuine workers, who are the surplus, yeah. who, is, who should continue to work for the county and who shouldn't, who has not made a contribution and who has. Who has stolen. Who has stolen. And you know, from that exercise, then I would know where the loopholes are. We block them first. I will forensically audit everybody that has been elected with me. I will be audited thoroughly. Mm. My deputy will be audited forensically, mm -hmm. thoroughly. As in lifestyle audit. Everything, everything, all the accounts, everything. All the MCAs will be audited so that by the time we start, I'm not starting with any closets or any 
um, skeletons, yeah. with any rotten bananas inside the closet. Nothing. Everything is clean. Miguna, this is Kenya. No, no, this no. This is Kenya. No, no, my that friend. That kind of stuff does not happen. Listen, listen. When Kagame took power, and many people will say many things about Kagame, but one thing he has done, and we have to give credit where it is due, mm. he has cleaned Rwanda of corruption. He's a dictator, a benevolent dictator, yeah. and I don't like that. Sure. But one thing I like, he's efficient, he has a vision, mm. he works hard, and nobody steals. he's intelligent, nobody dares. and nobody dares yeah. steal. Yes. In China, the same thing. They will take you to the firing squad. Easily. Yes, people still steal, but I'm saying the country moves forward. The fastest growing economy is China. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the drug dealers are shot. People who are caught stealing from the public are hanged. That is a good system. That is a system that is... You see, when we are raising our kids, we should be teaching them hard work, honesty, that you get paid for what you have put in, and that uh, you work as a team to build each other, not to steal from each mm. other. That's a good society. I want us to go back to those virtues so that our children can look at us and be proud of us. So that what we leave behind is a legacy. Yeah. You see, right now, two richest men in the world, and there are many of them, Bill Gates and Buffett, Warren Buffett, mm -hmm. the so-called uh, Oracle of Omaha, they have come up with a system where all their wealth would be given out by the time they die, so that there is nothing they are leaving behind. You know when you go to law school and you do estate administration, that is what they teach you, that when you die, you should leave nothing behind. You should have distributed all your wealth. All your children should have gotten what they are entitled to. The rest you can give to charities and foundations mm. to help society. That way, your estate uh, does not attract tax. Estate administration tax and probate mm. tax, mm. there's nothing because you've dealt with it ahead of time before you die. Those are smart men. Tell that to these guys. When they die is when the concubines mm. and the, the whatever, yeah. and the children that were left wherever, they all come and they start fighting. The estate is eaten by lawyers. Yes. The crooks come from the... That is a very inefficient, very wasteful society. That society is not wasteful. And that's what... I, I'm coming with a different orientation. Mm. I'm trying to tell these guys, you don't need all this wealth. This primitive accumulation is not going to help you when no. you're dead. No, you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. And it's going to give a lot of problems to your, your children yes. and your grandchildren yes. or whatever. And others. And others. We're gonna, you got a minute. Yes. you got a minute to talk to the people of Nairobi. That's your camera. Yes. Go ahead. To the people of Nairobi, we are at a critical point. We are at a juncture in history where if you make the, the wrong turn, you go to the abyss. You continue with the cartels, you continue with the theft, you continue with the tribalism, you continue with, uh, with corruption, you continue with the misgovernance and the inefficiencies that we have known for 50 years. On the other hand, you have a choice. You have a choice of a clean, qualified man of integrity that has a vision that is not just capable and willing but is committed to bringing Nairobi out of this rut so that it splendors and prospers and it joins uh, global cities of excellence cities such as Geneva cities such as Auckland cities such as Vancouver cities such as Toronto, I, I want to place Nairobi at a pedestal where all of us can grow together, not just a few stealing from everyone and becoming rich. You have a choice. If you make the wrong choice, you are stuck with the garbage, with the rot, 
with the infrastructural breakdown, with the slums, with the unemployment, the high unemployment. You make the right choice, which is me as a candidate, you get out of all of that. That is a decision you have to make. I hope you will come along with me so that we can transform Nairobi. Thank you. And if you don't deliver in five years? You hang me at Uru Park. Publicly? Publicly. And you will debate Kidero, Sonko, Sakaja, Bishop Wajiro, Dick Wawero, you'll debate them all? Let them come tomorrow. Are they willing to come on the bench or anywhere else, moderated by whoever they choose? Yeah. I'm ready to debate them even in their cartel-owned and controlled media houses. Mm. Yes. Miguna, Miguna. Good luck. And, and one more message. Go on. To Madam Excellency Orie Rogo Manduri. Oh, let's hear this. Let's hear this. You are an elegant lady, the age of my mother. I respect you. I value you. I understand that you made comments about me the last time that you were at the bench. I don't answer my mother's back. I was raised properly. I know that when your mother corrects you, that is, an, that is a demonstration of love. I embrace that fully. Join me in this journey. Excellence, Yuri Rogo Manduri. <laughs> <laughs> what more can be said? Enough said from the man with the same name twice. Wow. What a show. What a guest. Keep tweeting. At Miguna Miguna, at Koinang, and Jeff, the hashtag. Miguna times two. The choice, like Miguna says, is up to you. That's the bottom line. Wow. It's still a year and change to go to that election, but I tell you, the gauntlet has been thrown down. Let's see what happens in the coming weeks and months. Keep tweeting. Thanks so much for joining us. You can only get these kinds of guests right here. Kenya's television network, KTN. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. Good luck. God bless the people of Nairobi. You see, today you didn't use it.